We're going to have Miss Girl Hampton come up and talk to us about holding a frame correctly. Miss Girl is the president of the New South Wales Apiarist Association, the Sydney Metro branch. Miss Girl designs, develops and delivers the national accredited training programs for Certificate 3 in beekeeping in New South Wales. Miss Girl's study in bee diseases takes her to the UK every year where she has gained extensive experience in identifying and treating pests that currently are not found in Australia, like the devastating Varroa destructor. Ms. Gell has been presenting bees, insects and pollination with the Royal Agricultural Society just recently to over 1,200 school-aged children, and that's just been going in the last couple of weeks. She's a great mentor and is a member of the Illawarra Beekeepers. So I'd like to welcome Ms. Gell Hampton, if you could give her a warm welcome, please. Thanks. My goodness, I'd just like to thank Penny because she wrote my bio and um, I wrote hers to make it a bit easier. But I was looking around to see which Miss School Hampton this might have been, but still. <laughs> I'm going to be quite difficult because I need to use a prop. So, as I was said, we're often asked how to hold frames to better see what brood diseases might be present. So this presentation is actually going to have a look at how you hold the frame to look for the signs of the most common brood diseases. So, what are you looking at? Well, you've removed your frame from your hive, and what can you see? Well, on here we can see some capped honey, we can see some brood and we can see lots and lots of bees. So we can't really see exactly what we're looking at at all. So when bees are covering the area that you want to examine, you've got to shake the bees off. Now you need to do this over the hive or at least at the hive entry and that way you won't accidentally stand on the bees or the queen. To do this, you want to hold your frame fairly firmly with your thumbs on the top and you want to give them, sorry, you want to give them a good downward shake like that. You're not going to hurt your bees by letting them drop off the frame like that, but then you are going to be able to see what's on the frame. See, so that's much easier to see. The thing is, what can we see? Well, we need to stand with the sun behind us because good light's really important and we mustn't forget glasses. So if you need them for reading, you really do need to wear them if you're inspecting your frames. It's no good going out there without your glasses, trying to peer into a frame and not being able to see anything. By the way, I'd like to thank my model, Bruce, at this time. So here we're holding a frame to check for American fowl brood. So again, you want to hold your frame so that you've got plenty of light on it and you want to hold it roughly at a 45 degree angle. So you want to be holding it thus. You... Sorry, this is really awkward. <laughs> Sorry, so you want to be holding your frame like that, but close enough to be able to see. So tilt the top of the frame away from you, as I said, to about 45 degrees. And you want to be looking for things like sunken cappings or perforated cappings. You need to look into the bottom of the cell. So you need to be able to hold it so that you can see. Now, some people tell me they have difficulty looking into the bottom of the cell, looking this way. So as we know, there's a bottom V of the cell. And if we're looking for American fowl brood scale, then that's where we need to look. Now, Randy Oliver has a much different way of looking at things. He likes to hold the frame with the lugs to you, and he likes you to be able to look straight down into the wall of the, the cell, which is a lot easier for some people to actually do. So again, you need to hold it about eye level, good light again, and have a look down. And this way, you can actually see the scale in the bottom of the cell. Now, if you're looking at European fowl brood, then you need to hold the frame horizontally. Okay, so if we have a look at this one, we need to hold the frame here 
so that we can actually look down at it. So we're just literally holding it about waist high and we can look down on the cells. This is because with EFB, the actual infection starts in the cell, not on the cell wall. So you can see it a lot more clearly because it's an open cell. So you may also notice a nasty smell and you may start to see some discoloration before you see some sort of sticky black matter at the bottom of the cells. Now with chalkboard, again, you want to hold it horizontally because you're looking down. Okay, so you want to hold it about waist high and look down into the cells. And when you're looking down into the cells in the early stages, you may start to see some very fluffy looking sort of cotton wool type um, fungal infection. So here we've got the fungus actually taking control on one of the larvae. Oops, sorry, we just go back there. And once it's got a little bit further on, you can actually see the dark colored mummies. Some of them can be white, some of them gray, some of them are blue gray, and some can be quite dark that will be expelled from the, ex from the entrance of the cells. Sorry, the hive. Now what's wrong with this brood? Well, it's obviously a fairly new frame and they've put in some good honey there. There's actually quite a bit of brood that's uncapped and there's some capped brood, but it looks a little bit strange because there's a bit of a gap on one side. Now when we have a look at that gap, it doesn't look like brood. Could it possibly be something a little bit nastier? Well, we're not really sure unless we take a much closer look. So in this case, when we actually do zoom in a little bit and have a look further, we can see that we've actually got different colored pollens. Now, if you're still worried about this, you can still use a matchstick test and you can actually poke in there to see if there is any sort of gooey matter. But you, you will find that when there's a lot of brood being sort of, or a lot of eggs being laid at one time, a lot of brood going into your hive, that they often run out of room. And if they need to bring in more pollen, they will just literally put it in the first empty cells. Here's another one. So you can see from the big picture, it does look a little bit spotty. Nothing to worry about because if you come a bit closer again, you can see that there's different colored pollens going in there. You can also see on this frame that there are also some bees that are emerging. And as soon as those bees have emerged, I'm pretty sure that those will have pollen in them too. Now I've deliberately kept this one short so that uh, we had time for questions as well. But if you do need more information about brood diseases, then I suggest you either go and talk to the, the guys down on the DPI stand today. You've got both Rod and Mark down there. Or you can visit the DPI website where you'll be able to find out an awful lot more about pests and diseases. So on holding the frame, does anybody have any questions or would anybody like me to sort of go through any of that again? Everybody's fine with that. Oh, that's great. <laughs> So from now on, we're going to see everybody doing really good inspections. And we're going to find that everybody's able to shake their bees off their frames to examine them. Sorry, I can see somebody standing up over there. Hi, this girl, it's Sean. Um, oh, hi, Sean. How are you? I'm well. Uh, this girl, you know, identifying AFV, you can stick a stick into the cell and, you know, see the ropey little plastic band yes. coming out. Um, sometimes when I've used one of those little test kits, it's actually not registered that it was AFB with the two little bars in the test kit. So how do you work in that circumstance? Save us to kill the hive? No, oh, listen, I always, I'm a great believer in if you, you know, if you think that you may have a tumour, you don't just start arranging your funeral. You actually go and see a doctor and maybe get a referral to a specialist. So I believe that if you think that there's a problem with your hive, and you're not sure, and you've done what you think is a rope test and it looks bad, and maybe you've used a lateral flow test as well, and you're still not sure, then the best thing to do is to take a sample and send it in. And again, all that information is on the DPI site, and then you can go from there. Obviously, sometimes you may have already experienced something like AFB, and then you'll be pretty sure of what you're looking at. And then obviously you take the precautions. But if you're not sure, then send in that sample because they have a very quick turnaround 
and then you can go from there and you don't find that you've destroyed a hive of, of bees that may have had either a, a little bit of EFB or something that could be cleared up. Um, just from a thought, from identifying potentially the hive has got AFB, if you leave that hive alone, what would be the death time before that hive would finally collapse? Is it like a <coughs> Okay, well, I really wouldn't suggest doing that at all because the spread then from other bees, it can take a long time. It, it may not necessarily take sort of, it may not be something that goes very quickly, but obviously, depending on the level of infection, the strength of the bees, that, that disease will go through it. Um, good question probably to ask for maybe for either Rob or Mark who may have actually seen hives that have gone for longer. Generally, once I've seen a hive that's in that situation, people have dealt with it very quickly. I don't think I'd like to see them being left longer. It's impossible to see anything here. Any questions? Okay, again, I'd like to thank Bruce for being my wonderful model the other day when we were trying to find um, some decent photographs of how to hold hives. And um, I hope you're all having a really good day. On that note, Neil. <laughs> <laughs>